I'd like to call to order the Park and Rec Commission meeting of January 27th, 2022. Um, first of all, we do have a quorum, so we're, I think we're good to go. Um, approval of minutes from December 9th. We got a motion, we got a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. All right, unfinished business. Memorandum, memorandum of understanding with West Bend Baseball Association. Is that Mike? Yep, I will take that. All right, thank you everyone. Um, the memorandum of understanding that you have in front of you or MOU, uh, that has been reviewed by city staff, city attorney, and also the West Bend Baseball Association and their volunteer attorney, things like that. So everyone's reviewed this document and you know, in general agreements, things like that. So I will go through it this evening. Um, if commissioners have any questions as we go, I'll kind of go page by page, but not every paragraph or anything else like that. If you have any questions or clarification or anything else like that, please just let me know as we're going through it so I don't get too far ahead or anything like that. So. Again, as we go through this, um, I will refer to the Westman Baseball Association many times as the WBBA, and then the city I'll probably just refer to as a city. So as we go through this, just so everyone's kind of clear if I'm getting um, some acronyms in or anything else like that. Uh, but I'm gonna just start on page one. The WBBA has been providing some financial commitments to Carl Kuss Field. Um, I have not seen any final numbers as of uh, recently, but that number's uh, definitely north of 1.5 million, 1.6 million towards this project. Also committed to the project financially is the city of West Bend for $100,000 and the West Bend School District for $100,000. Um, also part of the original MOU to get us to this point, um, the city also agreed to demo the field that we did last year, and that was all under a different agreement at one point in time, demo the field of grants and things like that, but that still is part of this agreement leading into the future so uh, that's pretty much kind of page one page one's just kind of the recitals general responsibilities things like that page two i'm going to go down to item number four use of buildings and grounds uh, this is something our department really requested uh, we wanted five dates annually that we would have priority priority over um, <coughs> use at that facility um, the baseball association really just they didn't have any issues with it our number one concern is the 30 ninja mud run we wanted to ensure that we had that date secure in the past we've run part of the mud run through the field will we do that in the future yeah once we get established turf we might a little bit but um even if we never use inside of that field just parking there's just no room that everything's full so we just a date like that we want to make sure we grab and secure that uh, mud run is obviously our number one re uh, revenue source for recreation so, so you, we, don't, you don't have anything for any other dates you just no. put them there just in case yep, okay. yep. five dates actually um, city attorney suggested to me that we put five dates on there so again we can give the wbba those mud run dates from for 22 23 24 we we know where those are at so if they want to schedule tournaments and anything like that piece of cake we can we can work through that um, we do that it's not different with any other agreement we do like for the beer garden german night and all that those are city functions. We choose those dates that work with everything else that's going on July 4th, so all that. So um, I, th I would think, Mike, annually, we're gonna need probably that one date for the mud run. So uh, number five, six, and seven, again, um, these are mainly just continuance items of what we've done in the past with this organization. Um, we just wanna make sure we get all of these um, items in, in this document. Um, for the city and, and for the group themselves, um, but insurance and all that, they've been carrying the, the need in insurance all these years, uh, obviously compliance with laws, uh, indemnity, uh, things like that. Uh, nothing new to them or us. Uh, page Mike, three. What, what, what's the reason we both need to carry liability insurance? Uh, because they're their programs, they're their programs, their events, and we're not supervising any of that activity. So all of a sudden, some youth coach wants to run some game and some kid gets hurt, a, a drill or something, and someone gets hurt. Okay. We didn't authorize it or anything else like that. So to cover both parties, Obviously. that's why you kind of need that umbrella. And even for the city of West Bend, um, we have uh, recreational immunity in the state of Wisconsin, things like that, but still we carry, West Bend still carries our own liability insurance. Um, insurance is there for a reason, so. 
yeah that's for that insurance money it's very common even like special events uh, we even suggested if someone's having a family reunion a wedding things like that you carry an extra policy just for that event uh, we usually require it with rentals and, yep. yeah. so yep. um, page eight and we look at the term of the agreement um, again february 1 of this year through the um, end of 2025 again this agreement is just self-renewing come 2025 the end of the year we don't have to bring this before the commission again if the city of west bend the commission and the wbba are good to go with the agreement it just carries forward into the next year but at some point in time if we'd want to modify the agreement that's written in there also we can let everyone know six months in advance that's again very common um, number nine um, it, more operational items really uh, just proper maintenance on both ends the uh, wbba is being asked to take care of the field the facilities um, and they are asking the city to do the same um, really nothing quick question mike i'm sorry yep so is that still on that the school district is going to loan isn't there a special piece of equipment to <clears throat> yeah. work on the field or not School district has a groomer that fits behind a tractor, and I believe their groomer, uh, you go out and purchase it, it's around $30,000 or okay. something like that, because that was another MOU that was signed, I'm gonna go back probably five, six, seven years ago between the WBBA, the city, and the school district. Right. The $100,000 commitments and things like that, and the city would be able to use the groomer from the high school to help groom this field, because the high school teens will be using it. Um, we also just recently we ordered uh, another groomer we did our staff oh. for eighty five hundred dollars to do general maintenance general grooming on that field and then if we need the heavy one from the school district we can ask them to do it for us or okay. we could do it ourselves so and I take it your guys can handle this all is that yes. correct yep oh, excellent yeah. yep. no it's something new for us but we're excited about it you know Good. it's a new new challenge new feature so yeah. Mike will, it, will that involve any extra work or any different the way we take care of that field obviously that's a whole different grass field than <coughs> excuse me any other part <coughs> that we have. all right i mean it's a we spent a ton of money on the grass seed i know it's a, any special things that we have to do or your staff has to do to to maintain that field there is um some people think oh th like the infield is synthetic turf oh you don't have to do any maintenance to it nope that's wrong um you know where people are sliding in the second base third base home plate things like that the rubber that's in the grass moves we got to move that back in there we have to do some of that work by hand again the groomer or the drag i was just talking about we we don't do that once a month we're going to be doing it once two three times a week especially at that facility where it's going to be used a lot um, the outfield is natural turf. It's a fully irrigated outfield. Um, we're going to be operating at, we're going to be doing it just like we do at Quas Creek Park. There's going to be three to four, probably three fertilizer applications annually, dethatching, aerifying, verticutting. Um, we're going to, you know, obviously run an irrigation system. So is it going to be more maintenance or the same, I, you know, the same probably? Okay, we're going to spend a little more time in the outfield than what we did on the old field. and. You know that you know so it's it's probably a wash you know it's sometimes people think oh synthetic turf you just walk away yeah, you can't well, that was if you do question. that you're going to just have problems you're going to have real problems right especially where your outfield meets your natural turf yep there's always something yep there. absolutely because the uh, synthetic turf that's there it's it's a carpet it's a plastic right. carpet prepared for yep it. and we have crumb rubber in there and we gotta we gotta maintain that surface that's in there and if we don't then we could also have safety issues things like that the rubber gets blown out then they're landing on stone that's about as hard as this floor we don't want that so yeah Thanks. good no, glad, good you're question. glad you're covered okay yeah no it's no it's i look forward to it you know so it's a great it's a great facility it's going to be an exciting year um page four fundraising uh the wbba um, they're going to continue fundraising for the the different facilities and that priority sheet is coming up here shortly um two items i did find um Carol and I have proofread this a hundred times, but so many things have been cutting, cut, cut and pasted. I found two typos, one in number 11 and one in number 12. So number one, number 11, it should state re, um, related to, and number 12, there to. So in the agreement I gave the chairman this evening, I added those spaces in there. So if this is adopted this evening and approved, um, those two changes have been made, so I just wanted. I saw to, that related to, and I thought maybe that was some legal jargon that oh, I didn't know about. Oh. Um, no, I've I've read this a hundred times, and whatever. 
Yeah. yeah. And you do spell check and it's... Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. surprised I didn't pick it up. And, but this thing has been cut, it, cut and pasted and redlined so many times that... So, um, so those changes have been made in the copy that Mike has. Um, again, no, like number 11 here, the audit. Um, we have that with other organizations that if we... We need to see their financials and review things with them for whatever particular reason. We'd have to give them a heads up and review that with them. Um, again, it's nothing against the Baseball Association. We do the same thing with the Friends of Black Laran or the Softball Association. We go to their meetings where they're listening to their minutes, reviewing financials with them, things like that. So that's, that's very common in these types of agreements. Um, number 12, the rental fees. Um, we'll get into that when we talk um, some of our commission policies later, but we've been working with the baseball association to what the fees they want to use. We're going to use those same that same fee structure. So someone rents it from West Bend, they're going to get a break versus them, or so. No, we're going to use the same fee structure that they are using, and it's it would have been pretty similar anyways to um, what we would we would charge. So we'll go through that um, when we get into the commission policy a little bit later. Um, page five, basically a signature page. Also, there's an amendment in there. Once it's assigned, either party, if they want legal review or something like that, that's in there. Um, page six, um, exhibit A. Um, this is their order of priority for fundraising. Basically, phase 1A is done. It has been completed. Uh, they are working on phase 1B. Uh, dugout and spectator benches, uh, those should be done by spring baseball, field lighting they're working on, flag poles, signage, things like that. So this is their order of priority. Um, we would agree with this order of priority where make the field playable, functional, and um, in 1B you see field lighting as a second item. That'll be a big ticket item, but I think most people involved with baseball in this facility realize the importance of, of that item. Can I ask on 2A scoreboard repair, what, need, what repairs need to be done? They're looking at <clears throat> once once the scoreboard, the current scoreboard ages out a little bit, oh. um, we're going to have to put some new panels and some control panels into it. So, again, it's... it's not currently... The, no, you know, no. right now everything's working great. Um, the GPS that's in it for the timer and all that, it, we're, everything's good to go. Um, it's great that they're thinking that far ahead. It's basically maintenance to, to, that, um, to that scoreboard. So, yep. And then page seven, exhibit B. Um, this is kind of the, the meat and the potatoes, I, I would say, um, with this agreement. Um, the city's gonna maintain the facility. That's, this is not uncommon. This is the same type of agreement we have out at the Conservancy with the Friends Board out there. Um, this is, a, the WBBA is a volunteer organization. We can't expect them to be out there cutting grass five days a week and fertilizing and things like that. It will be a city or is a city-owned facility. It's a city managed facility. Um, we will conduct the maintenance, the WBBA, they will do the scheduling and programming. Um, they do have some, you know, um, some of the maintenance items fall into them also like the press box and things like that, that if they use that, they're gonna have to clean it. Concessions area, still run the concessions area, keep that area clean and functional. Um, concessions are never a lot of fun and we should be fortunate that we have an organization to do it just like out at Gloss Creek Park. So um, so that is the MOU highlighted. I'd be happy to answer more questions or provide clarification. I'll we'll move to approve. Second. Okay, we got a move to approve and a second. Any more discussion on it? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. All right, next, new business. <coughs> Policy <coughs> review 8200 conditions of rental use of facilities. All right, I will take this um, as we go through it, through the 8200 policy and the 8300. Um, if I'm missing anything, Carolyn or Nick, please jump in. Um, Carolyn and Tanya work with these policies and our renters and things like that every day. So um, they are certainly our experts and then some of the fees and things like that kind of um, fall into Nick's area of responsibilities also. Um, the last time this policy was reviewed or uh, revised was 2013. Um, so things operationally, how we do some of our things now, um, we have changed and we want to make sure we get these policies up to date. It's like we did in December when we brought, um, what was it, 8,000, policy 8,000, I think, before the commission. So again, I'm going to hit some highlights as we're going through this. If there's any questions, 
and anything in these documents please let me know or if something doesn't sound right or whatever please you know let us know we can make those revisions um, i'm going to jump into page three here um, about two-thirds of the way down we have a highlighted section um, this is just our updated reservation policy we added the regner park beach house to this um, and these policies help support the weddings out at the conservancy and it also helps our renters so right now if you want to rent one of our facilities for 2022 our facility rental starts january 3rd that first monday in january so you can rent anything then for 2022 but what we do with our year-round facilities the marin center now the beach house riverside we go not to the end of the year out to february the following year so if someone has that christmas party or something like that in january february the following year we make that window 14 months and not 12 months so that's the reflection in this policy here or the update um, page four um, we kind of redlined that one section about the police officer uniform police officer um, i'm guessing that was kind of an old school kind of policy um, we would delete this because that scenario itself would be determined by the police department if there's an event going on or something like that they would determine if an officer is needed on patrol things like that and they don't invoice for it but if they needed to again that would fall under their realm of responsibility we don't determine how the police department functions so that's why we redline that page five um, we didn't suggest make any suggestions for changes but again um, just fees deposits um, how our staff uh, works with um, customers with cancellations uh, things of that nature again some of this is just operational with keys and locks and how we work things again to make it functional for our staff maintenance and our customers we try to make it as um, understandable as we possibly can page six we look at hours of use that has been updated um, that update re reflects our current ordinance so the old policy was pretty close but in recent years we changed like old settlers park and vest pocket park uh, so there's no hours at those locations because they're kind of general sidewalk areas things like that um, but we certainly want to make sure that it's accurate here in this policy again as you go through general conditions of use litter trash driving these are all operational things that our staff can use while we work with our customers and explain things with our customers page seven you look at specific conditions of use um, each one of our renters they sign a rental agreement when they come to city hall they get their keys in a rental agreement and these items are on there and our staff can communicate that to them at that point in time because there's a lot of times people are like well where's the broom or where's the cleaning supplies or where's this where's that um, that's the one-on-one -on -one. we get five or ten minutes with that customer these policies are explained they sign for it they take it with them so um, again it's part of our rental agreement um, page eight we lined out the arrangements for the restrooms our renters will never need to worry about locking restrooms we have electronic timers on all of our restrooms they lock automatically our renters special events all that stuff so um, that's really about it for policy 8200 um, it's not a real detailed policy a lot of it's operational um, our office staff works directly you know with our customers with those rental agreements and things like that so questions comments or no questions okay do we need a motion yes a motion and okay. vote please with the changes to the policy 8200 okay got a motion to a approve. a second any other discussion all in favor aye, aye. motion carries okay i guess we're going to 8300 now sounds good thank you um again this policy was updated in 2019 i think some of those policy updates we're related to the rental fees that we'll go through a little bit here out of the conservancy with weddings and things like that so um, but there were some other changes in here um, page three um, the new rental that we added there was the regner park early risers kiwana shelter for 60 dollars a day um, we set that fee or we're suggesting that we set that fee at that dollar amount looking at some of our other rentals um, i did look at um, some comparables to like washington county Waukesha County, some of the other area um, park systems and what they are charging. And, and generally speaking, all of ours are kind of in line. Everyone's a little bit different, size of structure, how many tables, things like that. Um, but for the early risers um, shelter, that's $60. Um, that also coincides with like our, um, our picnic groves and things like that that we're gonna go through here shortly. 
Um, I'd also like to note uh, a little bit further down below that we're not asking for any change, but we do charge non-residents a fee of 50% higher than the residents for these facilities. So that, that's in there, that's built in here. Uh, non-residents or residents can reserve our facilities at the same time, but the non-residents will certainly pay, mm -hmm. pay you know, that 50% higher fee. One item we did not include in this yet, and we're hoping February, March, bring it before the commission, is a new rental facility schedule or um, fees and things like that for the beach house. Um, we're trying to work through that um, with staff. And again, that information would go into this policy uh, when we kind of get it finalized before um, the commission. But we're looking at what are we gonna do dur during the swim season? What are we gonna do during the skating season? What are we gonna do during the off season? Things like that. Um, right now we're looking at, we have our community room in the back and we have the patios on the south side. During the summer, we'll probably offer two parties or two different rentals because it's gonna be birthday parties and things like that. The beach is gonna be active, lots of noise, everything else. Non-swim season, we probably won't do that. We'll keep it as one rental. So if someone's having a family reunion, it's gonna be a little quieter. <laughs> it's their family reunion and not another party right next to them. So um, we will bring that before the commission. Again, February, March, if any commissioners wanna see what we're looking at ahead of time, let me know, I can send you information. I'd be happy to get feedback on that. So that'll be coming, that's pending. Uh, page four. Again, I believe this policy, or this was the section of the policy that was updated most recent. Um, this is the rental um, policies for out at the conservancy, general use, and for wedding packages. Um, if there are any changes, if the commissioners want to see any changes, we would also take those proposed changes before the Lac Loran board, because that is um, part of our MOU with them for um, fundraising and things like that for that facility. Page number five, um, this policy, the entire policy has been lined out because it relates to the old rec um, center that we had on Elm Street. That's how old this section was. <laughs> so I, again, I've been with the city for many years. I don't know why it's still in there or anything else like that. I have no idea. Um, just human error, Someone's never, we just never updated it. Um, we do have our library, our rec center over at the lower level of the library, and we have an MOU for that with the library. And so, again, just another group we work with and um, another set of rules, things like that. So we do have a rec center. It's just not this one. So that's why we were just deleting this entire, this entire section. So, again, we were in need of updating some of these policies. So thank you for being patient with us. Um, page number six, again, um, this is just a policy for concessions. We have two of them um, that we work with outside groups. One is Carl Cuss, one is out at Quas Creek. We have MOUs, again, with those organizations to run those concessions areas. Uh, the concession area over in the Beach House, um, again, we'll continue to operate that internally. We're not looking at having an outside group generate revenue there or anything else like that. So page seven, Picnic Groves. Uh, Picnic Grove number six has been changed. We're suggesting the change. Again, uh, looking at the Kiwana shelter fees, the other Picnic, other Picnic Grove fees, we just wanted to adjust that. And then also in the policy, we've never allowed any rentals on July 4th or the Dirty Ninja Mud Run. The park is way too busy to have other parties and things like that going on. Oh, so many general use people. Um, we just don't want to be renting Picnic Groves and tables and Oh, it's just there would be uh, that would be a mess. Yeah, people so, still use them. It just we just aren't renting them. Right, I mean, the park's full, and we want people to come in and be able to find a picnic table for their right. their day in the park. So, uh, page eight, we are not suggesting any updates to the electrical or water usage or fees. Um, page nine, again, I kind of mentioned this earlier. Uh, we've been working with the Westman Baseball Association to uh, determine appropriate fees, things like that. Um, so right now, you can kind of see what's been lined out. Um, if an organization donates $1,500 or more annually to the Baseball Association, and they are a member of their organization, they can use the member fee for the facility, which is free. You just schedule through the Baseball Association. It would be all, it would be like the Little League and things like that, that's all free. If you're a non-member and you want to rent it, you want to rent it from the city, that's fine, the fees are here. You want to rent it from the WBBA, it's the same amount of money. If you want the scoreboard, you want the PA system, you want all that, that's all controlled by them. 
we would tell them then you'd have to contact them anyways. So basically, the West Bend Baseball Association schedules and programs that field, and this policy aligns directly with what they will be charging, things of that nature. Page 10, we didn't suggest, we have not suggested any um, adjustments for leagues or anything else like that out at Quas Creek or general rentals for softball fields. Um, page 11 for athletic court reservation. Up on top, we had lined out a permit is required. We don't have permits. If someone wants to rent, if I rent the softball diamond in Regner Park, our office is going to give me a sheet of paper with my receipt on it, my date, my time, I'm all set. If I'm there with my baseball team and someone's like, hey, you got this field rented? Yeah, here's, here's my reservation. It's not a permit. I think permit and how they used to do it, just kind of a little bit of old school. Someone rents something, they get a receipt. Um, so if someone needs proof that they haven't rented, their receipt is their permit, I guess. So just kind of clearing up some language there. Uh, the horseshoe courts in Regner Park have been removed with Carl Cuss Field. Again, if we um, do put courts back in there, at some point in time we would change a policy. Um, we just, <coughs> at this point in time, wanted to remove it. That way the policy is up to date with everything we have out there. Page 12, um, Regner Warming House and the ice rink hours. We just took the warming house hours out because um, many years we don't know exactly what hours we're going to have. We hire someone to work the warming house, they're getting paid out of the recreation budget. Okay, We don't charge anything for ice skating. Well, our rec bu budget is a revenue-based budget, so the more labor we have working for a free event, the more revenue we need to generate somewhere else. So most of the time we're not open Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays anymore or maybe just weekends. Part of it is do we have staff and part of it is it's a cost associated with it. So if we have free programs, we need to make that money up somewhere else. So those hours, right now we just didn't want it real specific in the policy. We'll be open when we can and things like that, so. The rink is available for skating, just, just yeah. the warming house. Right? Yeah, the rink, would, just like this year, we have no warming house. The rink is still there. Our guys are still flooding it. It's usable, things like that. Just sometimes the warming house, it's not going to be open seven days a week anymore. We just open on the weekends. Will the, will the outside bathroom be available? Outside restrooms will be winterized. Those will yeah, be too. They're not heated. Yeah. It'll be just like the other restrooms in the park, April 15th ish to uh, October 15th. Yeah. Page 13, um, one new item we um, added here were dunk tanks. Uh, Carolyn and Tanya and our staff, we were getting more uh, requests for dunk tanks in the parks. We don't have an issue with that. We just want to make sure we're working with the customer on where it goes, where you're setting this up, who's driving it in, when, things like that, because when they pull the plug on 500 gallons of water, we want to make sure it's not washing something out or someone dumps 500 gallons out here and four days later Lori's setting up a grill for German night and it's all mud no we just so it's in here just it's um, it's a good item to add to this um, Carolyn had mentioned it that you know we're getting these questions these requests so we just wanted to make sure um, we're listening to our customers and getting those in these policies uh, page 14 um, the changes that we are suggesting the hundred dollar fee impact fee that we've been doing for a while and some of these other items that we have in here we've been doing those for a while and they impact our special events um, and those special events most of them will be coming before the commission in february so we're kind of waiting for this to go through before we uh, discuss some of those events coming up item or page 15 i'm going to let nick explain those are the swim pond fees so you can see that the swim, uh, swim pond and splash pad fees have been updated. We talked about the, uh, with the proposal with the fees as well as with the activities um, for the swim pond. So the last significant changes were made back in 2012, going into that summer. So going into this summer, that's 10 years. Um, so I think it's time that you know um, we look at the fees, do some upgrades, and that youth ages three to 15, that is <laughs> dollar crossed off that actually should be 16 going to 35 for the pre-season swim pass um, but you know obviously the record beach has never been about turning a profit for the rec division or, or our department it's all about you know providing the quality of life experience within our park system 
However, over the course of 10 years, lifeguard wages, first aid supplies, equipment has all increased while our fees have remained the same for those 10 years. So I feel that it's time that you know, we kind of narrow that gap between our expenses and our revenue. And I still think that this is an affordable and good value you know, for our residents within the community. If you buy a preseason youth swim pass at $35 and they visit more than eight times, it's, it's paid for. If they're a casual user and they're paying the daily fee, the daily fee charge would go up a dollar. So if they visited Regner three times last summer, their increase is going to be $3 going into this summer. So I still think it's a good experience and affordable experience for our visitors um, out at Regner. So that is the fee changes that you know, we're proposing in this document, and you'll see it later in the fees that are presented for the summer as well. We used to charge non-resident fees for swim passes. We quit doing that some time ago? We, yeah, that, that ended like around 2012 as well. So it's just the preseason charge, and then once the beach opens, then it's right. a season pass. So it goes up a little bit. And that, fa that family, that max of five, is if they're a family of three, we do let them put the babysitter, the grandparent, that maybe bring them to the beach on that family pass up to five. And if they want additional people on top of more than that five, then it's just an extra $10 charge. So if their family is seven, you know, mm -hmm. they would pay 95 did you compare this to like Kewaskum at all? What would be the compare? Because Kewaskum Pond, I would guess, is very similar cost-wise. What would that be comparable? Did anybody look at that? Well, I didn't, for whatever reason, I didn't look at Kewaskum, but I looked at Waukesha. Waukesha has um, kind of a similar situations, lifeguards, beaches, mm -hmm. lakes. So I looked at Waukesha, Hartford Aquatic Center, Cedarburg Aquatic Center, Port Washington Aquatic Center, and our fees are right in line. Um, Waukesha, again, with the beach situation, children's $4, adults $5. Okay. Um, uh, the aquatic center out at Hartford, you know, $325, $425. Cedarburg, again, it's an aquatic center. For resident, for Cedarburg, it's four. For non resident, it's eight. You know, and some of the facilities charge non resident fees, some of them don't, things like that. So. I, I mean, for the, just looking at the daily fees, because there's different packages all so over we're, season. We're in the wheelhouse. That's so, all I'm asking. Yep, daily I, packages oh, were right there. I, and I got you. Bumping yeah. a dollar is not going to make or break. Yeah. <clears throat> it's the so. season passes. I mean, it's quite a jump. But like, yeah. like you say, you haven't jumped in them in a while. So. Yeah. <clears throat> and, you know, <clears throat> Nick had kind of mentioned it also. I mean, it's, again, that aquatics operation in Regner Park is paid for by the recreational enterprise account. Annually, we lose money in Regner Park, so we have to make that money up somewhere okay. else. Um, we know that we have to pay our lifeguards more money. We need more head guards and a beach manager, things like that. We need that support staff down there. We're going to have to pay for it. You know, that's just that's the reality. We can't hire lifeguards at nine dollars an hour, ten dollars an hour, eleven dollars. We can't. That that's done. Those days are gone. Right, gotcha. Increases will not make it, like I said, profitable. It's just narrowing that gap. Yeah. Right. The uh, law swim pass is that last part there where it says this fee applies to both resident and non-resident. You could probably strike that off. Oh, you could take the non-resident off. Very good. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, we take the legal charge up. We usually give them a break. They come to us five, six times. And I imagine, I imagine you're going to lose some people that won't want to pay it, but, I mean, you're, it's going to happen. I mean, it may encourage them to do the preseason swim pass, you know, right. if they notice the difference. Like me personally, I did a $28 pass last year. I think I used it four times, so I'll just do the daily one probably now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and people forget, I, I'm sure the friends of West Bend Parks are going to offer right. help if anybody needs yeah. the help to buy passes. Right. So yep. I'm sure that will come about. So. Yep. And that's actually another policy that we're looking at in the next couple of months to review, and that's all in there where the Friends of Parks does offer that financial support, right. not only for swimming, but for different recreational other, events. Right. Yeah. Washington so. County has a program to do that. 
Yeah. So, they do. Outstanding. So we just, with the friends' support, we just want to make sure that if there's a young person in this community and wants to participate in one of our events, we're going to get them. We're going to get them in that program. Yes. So, correct. Good. All right, continuing forward, page 16 and 17, we are not suggesting any changes. Um, these fees come before the commission every year. Um, tonight's a great example. Uh, when the commission reviews the summer recreational activity fees. Uh, page 18, we just took off dumpsters and stage. We no longer have dumpsters or stages. We have garbage carts and things like that. Uh, page 19, again, we didn't suggest any changes, but if we do need to do some charge outs for repairs to something, um, some extra maintenance and things like that, um, our vehicle maintenance department updates a lot of our vehicle fees every year. They use uh, Wisconsin Department of Transportation formulas to figure that all out it's not just something on a whim that's all determined by the dot so if we need to go out and repair something that was vandalized fix something or whatever at the second we're leaving the shop that time clock starts ticking labor equipment materials and everything else for that so again it's nice to have the dot specs for that it's not something we come up with there's a formula base behind that in the last page which is page 20 um, is the policy used for the electronic message board on Main Street, Regner Park. <clears throat> Regner Park. Again, we are not suggesting any changes to this section of the policy. I can commend past uh, commissions for putting this policy in place. We use it often. Um, again, it basically states that if you're having a, an event on one of our properties, we will help you advertise it on this board. But you're not going to put someone's wife's name on her happy birthday Susie or and all that stuff and everything else um, we're trying to keep it on a professional level you know that um, for everything that goes up there and even operationally it sounds whatever but Tanya has got to update the laptop here she's got to drive down to the workshop plug it in update the board things like that so there's a little bit of time uh, behind that also but uh, we like to keep it on a professional level but I mean annually we use this policy several times a year to say you know we're not going to advertise for your event. You're not one. You're not my birthday. You're not, well, not, it doesn't. <laughs> if, if it says the chairman of the Park Rec Commission, I can. <laughs> so no, and it that board's been a home run. Okay, yeah. Yeah. it's always spinning and it's always telling what's going on. So uh, that's that's been a home run. Yeah. No, nope. and that was you know it's a great donation from the Regner Rejuvenation Group again. Yeah. And uh, no, it's been very helpful. We try to get some of the baseball um, schedules up and things like that, but that changes so much also. But we focus on the events, even, you know, music on Main, wheels on Main, you know, it's yeah. downtown, but it's an old settlers. We, you know, we get that, uh, get the word on the board, so. All good. Move to approve with the noted revision. Okay. We got a second. We got a motion, second. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carries. All right, summer program fees. So if you look at the programs in the rotations, uh, there's some dollar, two dollar, uh, four dollar increases. The increases are for um, instruct instructors, um, staff instructors for the programs. It's my plan to increase the starting wage um, of nine dollars per hour that was last summer to ten dollars per hour. Uh, this. <laughs> Is my plan to increase the starting wage of nine dollars per hour to ten dollars per hour um, for this summer so these increases will help cover that expense and also some some of the programs there's some equipment upgrades needed um, there's some significant program upgrades needed in archery and the t-ball and softball leagues so that's why you see a four dollar increase for those <coughs> programs and the programs that have no change um, are noted as such and we just talked about the beach increases for the preseason swim passes the season swim pass which takes effect once once the uh, swim palm and splash pad opens and then the daily fee would increase a dollar so four dollars for youth um, ages 3 to 15 and then adults older um, than 15, 16 and older would be five dollars and then two and younger would still be free. Well, you just drive up and down Main Street and look what they're offering. So, I mean, even $10 an hour, I think you're going to struggle again probably this year. Yeah. Right? To get people. So, I mean, probably. I think most people do realize 
fees have to increase, okay? So it, it's just, mm -hmm. it has to. I mean, it, it doesn't work the other way, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm hoping the dollar increase will entice some of our returners. You know, they'll get their merit raise plus another dollar, and then they, re, you know, we try to get some younger ones and mm -hmm. you know and build build our staff from from that standpoint. But yeah, hopefully, our returners will return. Mm -hmm. I agree. You're gonna get some of the retired older people out there. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> Teaching tumbling. Retired firefighters, I heard. <laughs> he could be a lifeguard. <laughs> Mike, I'll take the uh, Lac Laran programs. Uh, we're going to give Courtney the night off. She had a long weekend last night. She also uh, presented at the Mid Moraine Municipal Meeting, so I thought we'd give her a break for tonight. Uh, a couple notable items: um, Carolyn and Courtney did some research in reference to our jun Junior Naturalist Camp and our Adventure Camp comparable programs throughout the area, things like that. So you can see some um, some increases there. Uh, to help support those uh, those programs and those programs are also quite involved um, like the adventure camp things like that where um, there's a lot of materials we have to buy because um, today they're going to go play disc golf we need that tomorrow we're going to do this we're going to do that so there are costs associated with it and again like anything those costs are not going away and those two adventure camps they fill up like that um, they're pretty much a hot commodity um, another notable is the Raising Monarch Butterflies. This will be Courtney's second year at that. Um, that is a f uh, family program. They come into the Marin Center. Um, they get a full kit on how to raise monarch butterflies. They go out on the property. They find their uh, milkweed plants, things like that. Huge hit last year, huge. I mean, if we had more time and another naturalist, we would run more programs like that. Um, it filled up instantly so that's good to go um, I'm gonna jump all the way down to the bottom for beekeeper for a day Courtney applied for and received a grant and it's gonna pay for this well pay for the majority of the program um, we are going to be installing a beehive in the classroom out of the Conservancy it's cool. an indoor beehive um, at peak season this summer we should have over 50,000 honeybees growing in that um, so we can start calling Courtney the queen bee things like that but um, no um, so she's putting together some um, youth bee programs um, she bought some of the materials last year we need some more this year um, so that's going to be a new program for her and then also one notable the West Bend Birdathon last year she did that for the first time um the fees are on there i don't remember exactly 30 and 45 dollars this year is free to the public so again i'm gonna go back to august at the um, commission meeting that we had out at the conservancy courtney did a presentation she spoke about the uh, washington ozaki county bird coalition so it's lac Loran conservancy rivers edge nature center cedarburg bog and mequon nature preserve they've all joined together as a part in a partnership to run different birding programs so if Lac Loran runs a birding program, anyone from those other conservancies can join that program for fee, for free. At the same time, now we can join any of their other programs at those other birding programs at those other three facilities also for free. So we're trying to get people from West Bend to get down to Mequon, Mequon up here. Um, it's a really good partnership program. Um, we had one event scheduled out of the conservancy for Jan in January. Our speaker was coming down from Stevens Point. We had some snow. We canceled, rescheduled it. But again, like that one could be, you can attend it in person or Zoom. And if you're part of one of those three other conservancies, those programs are just going to uh, cross over to each other for free. Again, for us, we're trying to bring those people in from all these other areas back to West Bend or into West Bend out at the conservancy out there. So Courtney's Mike, been. Mike, for the beekeeper program, do we need any additional sign? I mean, there's some people that are so allergic to bees, like stocking EpiPens or, or warning signs or anything. Um, we're gonna, there'll be signage outside the conservancy, uh, things like that. Again, it's one of those situations, unless, how can I say this? Unless you're not being very polite to them, they're not gonna bother you. I, yeah. I get it. Yeah, but no, there will be signage outside the building. Inside the building, it's a big glass case, yeah. things like that. There's a flexible tube that goes outside. Um, inside the building, it's all good. You, you know, everything's good to go. Yeah. Outside, of, like Mequon Nature Preserve, um, we were over there for theirs twice, and I can stand two, three feet away from the hole, and the bees are just flying in and out all over the place. And if you're not swatting at them and things like that, you're going to be just fine. But some signage, yes, we yeah. definitely have some signage out there. So good. That's actually a great question. Yeah. So. Yep. 
go, out there, go out there to honey. So. <laughs> um, Carolyn, I got a quick question as far as uh, weddings this year. Do you have numbers in already for this year at all? Or? We have nine. Nine. And have you kept the price there? That's the same, right? Yes. Okay. Because I was wondering, you know, there's so much competition all of a sudden out there. So, all right. We've had what? What was the biggest year for weddings? Nineteen. Nineteen. Yeah. 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 But like you said, Mike. I mean, I look at Washington County and some of the different facilities they have in their county parks, and I mean, it aligns perfectly with what we have. Yeah. Nope. So. Do they do all of those others allow you to use the place for the whole weekend like we do? Yes, um, they do have different, again, it's not, not everything's comparable, but a lot of it's the same. Um, when I was talking to the folks over at Washington County this last summer, a lot of what we do is pretty much what they do. And you, it's a three-day package, things like that. But um, the one thing on some of their facilities, they have all their little um, cottages and, and things like that that people can rent. So not only can you go out there for a wedding for the weekend, you can stay right there on the property and all that stuff. So they, you know, have some of those features also that we don't. So, yep. Okay. Any other questions? Do we have a motion? I'll I move. Move to approve. Second. Second. We got a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. All right, donations. Holy mackerel, you got a lot of stuff to do here. I can, I can start. I just got a couple. Uh, it's my pleasure to announce a donation made by the West Bend Disc Golf Club for the amount of one hundred and fifty dollars to be used for general maintenance and repairs for the disc golf course. It's also my pleasure to announce a donation made by Spotlight Productions Community Theater in the amount of one thousand. $200. It was proceeds from the Dark Star fundraising concert that was held in Regner on August 29th this past summer. And those, that fund of those, that, those proceeds of $1,200 is to be used towards the phase two of the recreation center um, at the library. And I get all the donations <laughs> for the beach house. Here we go. Uh, West Bend Community Foundation, Greater Milwaukee Foundation, Doug and Sharon Ziegler Fund, generous donation of $38,000. Hmm. Again, these are all for the Regner uh, Beach House renovation. Um, another donation from the West Bend Community Foundation, Greater Milwaukee Foundation's Clifford A. and Elizabeth M. Nelson Fund, a donation of $20,500. The West Bend Community Foundation Johnson Family Fund, donation of $12,500 for the Beach House. And from T-Mobile, a hometown grant in the, in the dollar amount of $50,000. The Regner Rejuvenation Group, uh, this one just came in this last week. It's not listed on our on our agenda, uh, but wanted to include it here today. Regner Rejuvenation Group has voted to um, to put the remainder of their funds that they have raised in the past towards the Regner Beach renovation, Regner Beach House renovation. The total is twenty one thousand seven hundred twelve dollars and fifty cents. And finally, we have our beach bums. <laughs> um, and other donations from uh, local individuals and organizations. Um, from Paul Nelson, $300. Boys and Girls Club of Washington County, $1,000. Hanson and Company Real Estate, $1,000. Traffic Analysis and Design Incorporated, $1,000. Frank Carr, $1,000. Sarah Graff Incorporated, $1,000. Andy Gonrain, $1,000. Patricia Stracota, $2,000. Kettlebrook Church, $5,000. Jason Wealth Advisors, LLC, $1,250. Kirk and, and Sharon Emmerich, $1,000. Mr. and Mrs. Kenneth Collins, $1,000. Margie and Richard Klum, $1,000. Troy and Stephanie Lather, $1,000. And Joseph and Mary Zaremba, 
Wow. Thank you to all those donations. Wow. Again, it shows how generous the city of West Bend is. All these people coming forward for the good of the city. It's it's it is outstanding. It really is. So. Very impressive. It is. Sure is. All right. Do we have a motion to accept the donations? So, okay. Second. Second. Okay. Motion second. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Outstanding. All right, <clears throat> reports. Um, oh, that's me. <laughs> uh, two, two quick things. Uh, first of all, I had told Mike before the meeting, um, the guys are back out there forestry trimming city trees, and I was the happiest guy on earth when they came and trimmed my tree. It was, it's beautiful. They do a great job, and to see the efficiency, how they go down the road, it's incredible. They they do a great job so if you see them go out there offer them a cup of coffee or say hi or whatever or thank them because they do a great job and the other thing is the ice sculptures downtown very nice i mean just another nice thing for the city of west bend so that's my two cents worth <laughs> Secretary, Mike Weston. You can all also commend the staff for working down there at five o'clock in the morning. They were down there setting up those bases and helping set up the ice sculptures. So kudos to them again. And then uh, people out in TV land, like we talked about, the ice skating rink is open. The staff's got it all zambonied off and uh, there's not a lot of people using it. Go down and take it and then snowshoe Friday tomorrow. So a lot of things to do. There is, there is. Great, thanks Mike. Uh, quarterly trust um, okay there's really one item I just want to most of the counts are kind of um, pretty <coughs> steady right now and one item I just kind of wanted to mention was the park acquisition fees or the park impact fees uh, the three hundred thousand dollars has been removed from that for the Regner Beach house so and that um, was cleared right that yep. okay yep so excellent that was a good move um, I believe unless your Mike's gonna say more uh, park manager, conservation, unless Nick wants to talk more. I do. Oh, you, okay, all right, Mike. Nick. Because Mike did send out an email showing whatever the updates with the other guys, so okay. So for January, for winter, what we have going on for programming is we got swim lessons at the high school pool. They started on January 8th, and winter lessons will finish up on the 26th, and then spring lessons will start on March 12th. Music lessons is currently going on at the Music Academy for beginner guitar, drums, ukulele, and piano. They started on January 2nd. A uh, new program and offering that we have this winter is it's called Learn and Play. It takes place at the Ralph Center. It's a partnership with the West Bend School District for children three and four that can go there on Tuesday and Thursday mornings and also in the afternoon. And the instruction is conducted by the West Bend school teachers. So it's been a Good program. Uh, it's a win-win for both the recreation uh, division and for the school district over at the Ralph's Education Center. Following programs that are taking place at the Library Rec Center is Women's Health and Fitness. It's a group fitness class that takes place on Tuesdays and Thursday evenings. We have Cardio Dance. It's another group fitness activity that takes place in the dance studio on Thursday evenings. For the kids, we have Tiny Tot Tumbling and Junior Gymnastics on Saturday mornings. Dance has started back up there on winter break, but they started up um, the week of January 10th. So they're down there on Tuesdays and Wednesday evenings, of course, using the dance studio. And then we started a new program for adults. Um, it's a tap class for adults to learn how to um, do tap. Our, one of our dance instructors that teaches the youth, she also teaches that class, and that's on Monday nights. And then, of course, we have our traditional ballroom dance class um, that is on Monday evenings as well at the dance studio. So the rec center is busy pretty much Monday through Thursday and then on Saturday mornings, there's programming going on there in both rooms, the dance studio and the activities room. Ice rink is open, as Mike mentioned, for the public on daylight hours. It'll be nice um, next year when, once we get the lights back working for, um, for winter for, for our night skating. And then of course we'll have the new Warman house slash beach house too. That'll be utilized a ton and um, we'll get skating back up and rolling. Upcoming spring rec programs. We have instructional baseball, soccer at Quaz Creek. 
We have archery lessons out at the archery range. So that'll be in the spring. That, those will start in April. And then we have our dance recital April 9th over at the high school auditorium. Summer prep obviously is ongoing, sponsorship recruit, recruitment um, for certain programs, and of course the mud run. And um, also we started planning, getting our dates and our summer schedule and all that stuff ready for the summer booklet. So deadline for that is February 1st. So we'll start getting that piece together and get it out uh, by March. Cool. Any questions for Nick? All right, I think Mike, you got to finish it up. Yep, a uh, couple of quick items. Uh, I just want to touch on the uh, winter warm up again. Um, one key aspect with our winter event, it's not weather dependent. So there's a lot of communities throughout the state, they schedule toboggan races and all this stuff, things like that. If you don't have snow, a lot of things get canceled and all that. So I commend our staff, Jackie, um, the different groups we work with that it, our event is not weather dependent. Rain, snow, shine, cold, this, that, whatever, we can still hold the event. Um, I'd also like to thank all the volunteers that are involved. Um, one particular group is, I'm going to call out Craig Walker here and his uh, and the biking guys out there, Glacier Blue Hills, things like that, putting together that um, the huge ass uh, bike race in Regner Park. Um, it's awesome. I think it's great. It's just, it's a different type of event that it's, Craig, it's been what, four years, three years now? And um, it's, it's not a, a typical West Bend event. I think it's great. The crowd that comes in, the energy, the positive energy, and just the group, the work with them out of Glacier Blue Hills and to see this, this event in Regner Park, I mean, it's, it's just a lot of fun to watch. So, again, everyone involved in the winter warm-up, um, I think it's exciting. We've got great weather yet. The sculptures are still on there. We're going to try and leave most of them or all of them down there. They have a wine walk coming up downtown. I think January 15th or something like that. So we're going to try and leave them up down there for cool. that. So, again, uh, great partnerships for that. Um, everyone's mentioned ice skating. Mike mentioned snowshoeing. We also have groomed cross-country ski trails out of the Conservancy. Everything's groomed. We don't have a ton of snow, but trails are groomed, definitely usable. Uh, beach house update. Everything is moving along in a positive fashion. Um, we got word this or right now we're scheduled to open for swimming june 9th we got word this week we're going to get our windows june 9th <laughs> so um but we may need to put in some temporary windows plywood whatever this and that we will be open that's not going to delay our opening but i was just i get that email and i'm like okay okay it's the norm go buy some plywood or something you know whatever so um so the day we open if we're putting putting windows in good that's just progress as far as i'm concerned so but no everything's um moving along nicely um we're hoping to secure uh, some additional donations to finish the project when i mean finish the project it'll be the building and the concrete and asphalt around it the parking lot we're going to look at 2023 construction uh, may be using some different funding sources for that things like that randy you and i've talked about mutual mall money and things like that but um it would be difficult to impossible to ask you know the community for donations for a parking lot but we certainly will need it to support that facility so with the remainder of the possible donations come in we will be able to build all phases of the building this year right now before that june 9th date so uh, that is good to go that's great news at riverwalk downtown we are out for bid uh, bids are due February 9th. Last week we had our mandatory pre-bid meeting with our contractors. We had three primary contractors at that meeting, which is that's about right for a, a project like that and that size. So um, originally the bid opening was February 8th, but we found out, I didn't know, there's a bunch of DOT projects due that day for bids, so we moved it back by a date. The contractors asked if we could just move it back by a date, the bid opening, so we did that. Um, next commission meeting is February 24th. Um, lots of special events. Um, we're looking at having another MOU possibly, what should be coming before the commission uh, with a local developer running a trail, private trail to the Riverwalk. And hopefully we will have our friends from Ithaca, New York and West Bend, and they are gonna give us a presentation on the All Abilities Playground. Oh. The final cost estimates, final plan, everything together. Um, we're Working through the final details, I'll say, at this point in time with them. Um, and we're still waiting to confirm the 24th um, with those folks, but um, they were kind of hoping to do it virtually. 
and I was really hoping that they would be standing here publicly and that way also we can bring the parent group in their board uh, other interested parties things like that um, instead of hearing about the project maybe from a TV screen or from me have them here in person um, explain the project costs associated with it how we got to where we're at today things like that so cool that's what I got all good stuff well is there anything else for the good of the Park and Rec Commission tonight anybody meeting adjourned